going on YouTube family? Today you're in for a treat because a lot of you have been asking for this video specifically. This is my top five playing cards. I just want to say super quickly, this is not a paid review. I haven't been sent these cards. I've paid for these cards out of my own pockets. I've collected them over the years. These are just some of my own personal favorite playing cards. Also, I do have my own deck of cards called the Moonshines, as you know, but I think it's pretty egotistical to put them in this top five list. And of course, like the weather, my favorites change over and over and over again. These are my favorite playing cards right now, but in six months from now, they could be completely different. But these seem to be the playing cards that have stayed in my hands over the years. And you'll see that because most of these decks are over five years old. Quite literally, they're like old and have dust on them. So first up, we have the Drifters from Dan and Dave. It says Dan and Dave Industries right here. And what I like most about them is the design. And actually what first captured me was I, I got the design wrong. I thought it was an image from the front of a book cover or at least inspired by the alchemist. And it turns out it's not. It's more like a cowboy scouts thing. And it says the journey is the destination right there on the box. But the way they feel and the way they handle is really beautiful. They're snappy, they're light, they flex quite easy. And just look at that for a back design. It's subtle, it's not too over the top cheesy. It the faces are pretty much normal except for, as you can see, the court cards are kind of like cowboy and Indian or cowboy theme, which is the reason why they're like not my favorite cards because I don't like uh, ridiculous court cards. But in fairness to the drifters, they are pretty not too overly done. They're just kind of like a subtle hint and nod to cowboy western. They're not like, you know, crazy over the top designed. You get two regular jokers, which are really helpful for sandwich routines, switch routines, anytime you need an impromptu sort of duplicate. These are great to include in any deck, so I love uh, duplicate jokers. And this is that Ace of Spades. Again, not a silly design. And again, that back design, look at that. Beautiful. And altogether, just a great deck. And it's one of those decks you could keep in your travel bag with you. And you get that sort of feeling, that sort of heart from the drifters that they were going for from it. Next up, the Darren Brown playing cards from Theory 11, and of course, Darren Brown, the man himself. First up, the tuck box, as always from Theory 11, is absolutely exceptional. No stone was left and turned. Just look at the detail in that. What I love is that it's designed on a book. So it literally looks like it's a book with gilded edges. And of course, it's from Theory 11, so it's printed by the United States Playing Card Company, the deck just has this sort of, I don't know how to explain it, but the actual feel of the deck, it's almost like uh, creamy. <laughs> so it's like a, it's a thicker sort of deck. There's a thicker sort of feel to it, but it's smooth. It spreads and farrows straight out of the box. And uh, yeah, ultimately this deck is not going to let you down. So here's the back design. And again, what I like about this back design is that this really is a traditional sort of feeling back design. I really don't like ridiculous or, or too modern feeling deck designs. I do like to have that sort of vintage feel to it. The face cards are essentially classic, but they're a little bit more dated, kind of like from the 1900s feel. And I love that so, so, so much. As you can see though, the aces, there's the ace of clubs. There's the ace of spades which is kind of like a more of a bulkier ace of spades. I'll find you the uh, the ace of diamonds. The aces are a bit larger, but that's okay because, you know, I've seen this in, in other decks in the past before, but I would have preferred these to be a little bit more smaller, but that's just a personal preference thing. But overall, the deck just has this feel to it. You sort of want to do more mentalism card work when you have this deck in your hand to channel your inner Darren Brown. Overall, I love the deck. I'm happy to perform with it at any time and it just feels so good when you practice with it. One other quick detail about the box is that the inside of the box is also gold foiled and gilded. Just another detail that adds that overall feel of luxury from this deck. Boom, next up, gator backs. These are the gold gator backs, but I do just love the gator backs in general. Side story, I have a brick of silver gator backs here somewhere, uh, but I can't find them for the video. So I don't know, the entire brick has gone missing, but check this out. This is the box itself. The tuck case is just insane. And what I love is that there's foil and also embossed black matte or blo black gloss on top of the box. So even though like at one angle, it looks like it's just got a crocodile when you turn it into the light, you can see all those little details. 
Now check this out, the cards are gold foiled. It's kind of hard to show in this light, but they're actually gold foiled. If I flip them, maybe you can see. When I first saw these gold foiled cards, I didn't have any experience with them. So I thought they were gonna be sticky and clumpy like some cheap deck, but actually the feel of them is exactly, if not better, than a regular deck, they they fan, they spread, they they farrow, they do everything they're supposed to, um, and they have that feel that David Blaine cards tend to have, which is kind of hard to pin down in any other deck. So as you can see, the faces are pretty standard, which is beautiful for me, except for the court cards. But these look pretty regular to the untrained eye, except for if you take a closer look, for example, David Blaine is on the King of Spades, as always with the Blaine decks and you'll see some other recognizable faces throughout the other court cards too. And just to have a quick look, this is the Ace of Spades. You can see it's got that alligator design on there. But overall, this is a luxury deck, 100% luxury deck. I have no qualms with performing with luxury decks. It's just I don't like to use them up so much. So for me, I keep this a practice with it. I have it as a showpiece in my home, uh, but this is in my top five because it's just a real unique special feeling deck of cards. You guys enjoying so far? We're down to the top two. If you haven't done so already, drop me a like on the video and hit that subscribe button. But number two in the second spot is the DMC Elites. Check out these bad boys. I don't know many people that don't have these in their top five. This is Drummond Money Cuts, a friend of mine's deck designed by another friend of mine called Phil Smith. Now, what I love most about this deck and what I think everyone loves most about this deck is that the design on the back, right? The design is a kind of a standard design. It's nice, it's simple, it works. It doesn't draw any attention to itself. But this deck, for those of you that know it, has one of the best marking systems ever designed in playing cards. In fact, this is my number two deck of all time. And I would say this has the best marking system of all time. It's simple, easy to read, but no spectator can find it with the untrained eye. In terms of how they feel, they're printed by the Legends Playing Card Company. So they're not United States Playing Card Company, but there's nothing wrong with that. They kind of have like this waxy feel to them. So they feel a bit thicker, but they're smooth as silk and they have a different feel to, to what you're used to if you're only used to United States Playing Cards. But Actually, uh, it's quite nice to have a change of pace and they allow you to get doubles very, very easily. They, they're very snappy. They last an incredibly long time. Um, again, the faces are, as you've noticed the theme, I like regular face cards. You will notice that Drummond DMC is on the King of Diamonds. The Ace of Spades is big, bold and beautiful. It is what it's supposed to be. No frilly edges. It's an Ace of Spades. And I quite like that because you don't want to have too much to a deck, especially when they're marked. This is one you want to keep it simple. They farrow straight out of the box. They last a long time. They're smooth. They're solid. They allow you to get doubles super super easily, and ultimately they're in the top five because they're a great overall deck. So DMC Elites by Phil Smith and DMC number two, and on to my favorite deck of all time. David Blaine Split Spades, Lion Edition, First Edition. I cannot express how much I love this deck of cards. They encapsulate everything playing cards should be, from the feel of the deck itself, to the, to the quality of the cards, and to the design itself. There's something about this design which is vintage, but also it has like a sharp sort of new edge to it, which for me, is is incredible and i love the fact that they're black and white so they're not red or blue you can get them in different colors of course but these this first edition split spades the lions edition they captured lightning in a bottle with this deck just from the way it looks in, in your hands to the way that it feels smooth i can't describe the smooth feeling to it of course this is a really old deck i've had this in my collection for about 10 years but there's something magic intrinsically about the feel of this deck. Of course, you've got Blaine on the King of Spades right there. I think, and I'm not 100% certain, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this was the first time that a magician put their own face onto a court card in, in, in a deck of cards, at least in the modern custom deck era. You get that iconic Ace of Spades as well, of course, which is an optical illusion. It's, it's a lady, but also at a different sort of distance, it looks like a lion's face. 
They just look great as they're being spread through in your hands. Of course, the faces, as you're guessing by now, I love them as they're just pretty standard apart from the court cards, but not a huge, huge deal to see. They're printed by the US PCC, but I don't know what they did to these cards. But when people describe cards as feeling and spreading like butter, to me, they are always describing the David Blaine Split Spade Lions. Also, shout out to the designer Mark Stutzman, who uh, is responsible for designing all of David Blaine's cards, including the Gator Backs. And he's an incredibly talented designer. You can just see the detail that goes in to these decks. This is my favorite design in a deck of cards and also my favorite feel for a deck of cards. They, I don't know what they did, but whatever that special secret recipe is, I've never found it since in any deck. And that's why the Split Spades are my number one deck cards of all time. So there you have it. Those are my top five playing cards at the moment. They'll probably be different in about five, six months. But I have to say, I don't think the Split Spades will be anywhere other than my number one top position. Anyway, guys, let me know if you enjoyed this video. I know a lot of you have been asking for it, but I haven't done a video like this before on the channel. If you want to see me do more, then comment down below but if you do want to win a deck of my moonshine vintage elixirs these are the marked edition then all you need to do is subscribe to the channel and comment anything down below and i want you to comment down below and tell me what your top five decks of all time are because, because there might be some in your top five that i've never seen or don't have that i want to get my hands on and they might find their way into my top five too and i can make another video to tell you what my new top five playing cards are based on your recommendation but that's it. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. If you're extra generous, drop me a like. And if you want to be notified of these videos going up before anyone else, then don't forget to hit the notification bell. And until next time, folks, I will see you very, very soon. Peace!